Hey, this is Brandon Ryan from Roland. I'm here at Sweetwater, and today I'm going to talk to you about the MX-1 Mix Performer. Now, the MX-1 is kind of a new uh, style of mixer. Uh, you know, there's line mixers, there's DJ mixers, but really no one's made a mixer that's designed kind of for the modern day electronic performer that really suits all of their needs. So we kind of took the mixer and thought about it and reimagined the mixer as a playable instrument. So um, let's take a look at some of the features. So it is an audio interface, it is a control surface, uh, but it also is a, is a playable instrument with step sequence effects. It does take some features from other types of mixtures. For instance, it has DJ style cue mixing. So you can cue up any channel in your headphones without it going to the front of house. And um, you bring that in whenever you're ready for it. Drop it in on a beat, mix it in smoothly. Uh, things like panners. Now these can be panners, but by default they are uh, tone and filter controls. So you can do filters, and there's 10 different types of EQs and filters that you can have per channel. Uh, you'll also notice it has a start and stop button and tempo control along with fine and, and tap. Uh, fine control of the tempo and tap features. You generally don't see those kinds of things on mixers because this is designed to control an, an array of gear like you see on the table. Uh, you may also notice that the mutes are on the bottom and the channels actually light up when they're unmuted and they go dark when they're muted. That's because these mutes are really designed to bring parts in and out. Uh, the other thing you'll find uh, that's probably different from any mixer you've seen is that there's a step sequencer on it. And these buttons are very similar to what you might find on a TR-8, the uh, TR Rec buttons, but they're just miniaturized slightly. Uh, there's also a large performance control for all of the master effects. Now all of the effects in here have been completely, uh, they're all new, built from the ground up for this, uh, for this device and they haven't been taken from any other device and they sound really amazing. Uh, it is also an audio interface, so it's an 18 channel, 24 bit, 96K audio interface, so very low latency, it can also do 44.1 and 48. Uh, 48k, uh, but so it acts as a control surface, a audio interface, an audio mixer. Uh, the other thing it can do is if you have any era gear like the System 1 we see here, the TV3 or the TR8, they can connect to the MX1 just with using a single USB cable. We call this connection era link and it uses standard USB cables. So you'll see the TR8 is actually connected over one USB cable. Plug it in, audio and MIDI and synchronization all get carried over this single cable. Same thing with the System 1. TB3 is plugged into port 3 back here, which allows it to actually bus power this device. So I literally have a single cable gives it power, audio, and MIDI, sync, um, everything. So it's a really clean, simple setup, especially if you have if you have era gear. Now I'm connected also, I have a MIDI cable out of the TB3 going into our um, SBX1 sync box, and then CV and gate connected to an analog um, synthesizer by Rayon called a drift box and then that's going analog into channel one. So all of this stuff is synchronized, all the audio and everything is going into the MX-1. Now the other thing you can do is bring in tracks from the computer. So I've got Ableton Live here, uh, and this will ship with live light, but I've got Ableton Live here with two channels coming back in. So in its normal mode, you have a fader here that comes from the computer. So this allows you to mix analog, of which there are six analog inputs, uh, two of which are an eighth inch jack, which is great for uh, you know smartphones and tablets and those kinds of applications, uh, digital coax, the four USB ports, which are for the era gear, and then uh, a channel from the PC. Now I'm not using one of my USB channels because I've only got three pieces of era gear, so I can also use that for another channel coming from Ableton Live. Now let's say you're a person who doesn't have any era gear, maybe you don't have any hardware at all and you just use something like Ableton and uh, you'd like to maybe have an audio interface for it or maybe you play out live with it and you'd like to spice up your live act or maybe have some more hands-on integration. Without any of this gear at all, you can plug a single USB cable into your computer. It will send 18 channels of Ableton tracks right on to the mixer itself. And you can use other DAWs as well. We'll use live as an example. And then you have filter knobs, you have beat effects, you have master effects, um, nice faders, headphone, 
te uh, tempo control, start and stop. It really takes the whole experience of using something like Ableton Live to a whole other level. And then, if you're ready to expand, maybe add a synthesizer, drum machine, vocal transformer, you plug it right into the USB cable and it'll just override that channel and show up here, everything mixes together. So it really does tie together all the worlds of computers, analog, era gear, um, everything into one device that kind of acts as your, as your control center, your nerve center for your whole electronic music rig. Um, so let's take a look at, at actually how it works. So what I've got here is on these last two channels, um, I've got two, just two loops coming from, from Ableton Live. And let's, let's listen to the first one. I've selected it, and uh, we'll go ahead and just hit start. And it's like this just drone sound, but it's a straight drone. And what I'd like to do with this is apply some beat effects. So I can see, I, I, I can add a slicer here. So for every channel, I've got a filter, a side chain, and a slicer, and there's different variations for each. And I can program in whatever pattern I want. So engaging the beat effects, you hear it's now doing a rhythmic slicing. And if I had to change the pattern, get it the way I want it. So that's maybe the pattern that I want. Now over here on another channel, I'll mute that. I've got this kind of just straight, sort of uh, ominous sound, and I'm gonna do the same thing too. So I'm gonna select it, and now it's also doing a pattern, and I've got different patterns for each, okay? Now I can filter these using the filter knobs, or maybe I wanna pan these left and right. So I've got both of them playing right now. So if I just hold pan, these now become panners, and I'm just gonna pan these out just a little bit, create a little bit of width. Okay, so I've got that happening. Now let's say we want to bring in uh, like a bass sound. So I've got the TB3 on USB3 uh, on the uh, third one here, and I'm just going to unmute it. Bring these down a little bit. So nice bass part playing. And let's say I want a, a little bit of side chaining. Maybe I want this bass part to pump a little bit. So I'm going to select that channel, and you'll see I've already got it programmed in here, but let's do side chain. So we pick side chain, and there's a bunch of different kinds of side chain. And let's just go ahead and do it on chord notes and turn it on. And now maybe I want to layer that with, with something. So again, I mentioned I have the TV3 going into the SBX1, and I'm controlling a piece of analog gear that doesn't have MIDI. Um, and you can go out of the MIDI ports on the, on the, um, the MX1 as well. Uh, and I'm going to layer this over. So I've got the drift box into channel 1. And again, I'm going to go ahead and sidechain on the uh, quarter notes and turn on the beat effects. And let's play this all together. So there's just the bass parts playing together layered, kind of pumping with the side chain. And I should mention that synchronization can come from anything. So I'm acting as the master tempo right now, but I can derive sync uh, from the computer. I can derive it from any of the other devices, the TR8. You can even put it in automatic mode, and it will just go ahead and pick up and start uh, make the master whatever plays first. But what's cool about having the MX-1 as the master is I've got full tempo control, I've got tap tempo, and I've got fine uh, control as well, as well as shuffle. Over, and, that, and that control is over the computer, the System 1's effects, the TB3, and the analog gear connected etc. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so you see kind of how the, bring this, so kind of how the beat effects work. So you've got filter, side chain, slicer, like a filter, slicer, side chain. And you've got that for every single channel that comes in independently uh, of, of one another. Now let's look at, um, so synth. So I've got right here, so I've got uh, the System 1 coming in on one of these channels. And no side chaining or slicing or anything on that, and if I want, we've got filter, or that can also be an EQ as well. So we'll leave that for when we're ready to play it. And then I've also got the TR8 coming in on channel 1. I'm going to do a little bit of filtering there. Now the master effects section went up, because I'm going to use right now, consists of six effects types. So we've got delay, filter, scatter, flanger, bit crush, and roll. And then there's eight different types per effect. So there's 48 different variations. There's oscillators, there are uh, tape stops, there's uh, distortion, there's reverbs, delays, all kinds of things. <clears throat> and we'll get into those in, a, in, in just a second. So let's go ahead and uh, bring in the 
uh, TR8. So we'll go ahead and just turn this down. I'm gonna bring the filter down. Let's uh, kick everything in here. Bring in our Ableton tracks. So by turning the performance knob, I can get more intense or less intense. So that's very intense or just subtle. Master filter. So very, very easy to, to, to control all this. Now the other cool thing I can do here is on the drums, I can actually apply a slicer. So I've, I've, I've sliced this up. So if I want to make the drums a lot more sparse without even changing the pattern, I can do this. We'll go to more advanced pattern. So it's very straight. And if I want to apply this to not everything, maybe I don't want to apply it to the drums. A little bit crushed everything. Now, one thing that's really, really cool about this that kind of takes the effects to another level um, is the combi effects. So when I go into combi mode, I can use any of these effects, even individual presets, and I can sequence them on the step sequencer. So for instance, uh, in this preset, and by the way, there are lots of presets in here. I'm using number 11. Uh, I can put a flanger, let's say, on 10 through 16. There's a bit crusher on 7 and 8. There's a delay on steps 3 and 4. Filter on 5 and 6. Scatter on just 9. So you can have a hit where there's a tape stop, maybe a big reverb hit, something like that. And I'll give you an idea of how this uh, sounds. And you can run all the channels through the master effects or just one of the channels. And there are hotkeys to kind of change your uh, selection very, very quickly. <laughs> That's got an oscillator on it, so pretty, pretty wild. Let's try some other ones here. And just turning off combi, it's gonna go away. So you can get some really pretty wild stuff or some not so wild. So the combi effects are really for more extreme. Now there are also scene memories. So I can recall up to 64 scene memories and you bring them up right from the step sequence buttons and they remember literally everything about the entire mixer. So volume changes, mute status, uh, what types of filters you've got. You've even got six different types of fader curves per channel, uh, and it remembers that. So it can actually change the fader curves. You can reverse the, the, the fader, um, you know, change the different types of curves. Um, <clears throat> the state of all the buttons, the state of all the effects, I mean, the tempo, literally everything can, can change. Uh, so those are, those are really cool, and they happen immediately. You can bring them up using these buttons just like you would program anything else. Uh, there's also aux send and return as well, which I didn't mention, which you can connect to effects pedals and those kinds of things. And then let's look at tempo. I mean, you can do some really cool stuff with tempo. So. So here we are playing, and I'm just going to grab the tempo knob. And keep in mind that there's an analog piece that's following along. There's Ableton Live, synthesizers. And then if I want to add some synths, now right now, I'm going to go ahead and select this. So it's right in time, the tempo's synced. Now if I want to chop that up and make it a little bit more interesting, I can select here, I'm going to go into the beat effects for that individual channel. And I'm going to slice it up into 16th notes. So every single one is going to be is going to be turned on. But instead of being smooth, it sounds like this. And 
And then again, slowing everything down. Everything follows right along. Roll effect. So you really have extreme control over, over everything, and it really does tie together uh, the worlds of software, um, analog, uh, era stuff, and really as much or as little gear as you have, the MX-1 really does tie it all together. Makes for a really dynamic performance situation. Um, you can use the effects as subtle or as extreme as you want. Uh, gives you headphones, um, gives you uh, the ability to cue mix things, and really, really great effects. And it feels really good, very, very solid. Um, and that's it. I think you're going to love it, and it really, really ties the whole uh, era system together. So if you have any questions about the MX-1 or any other era gear, make sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Brandon Ryan, thank you.